if our wave function is expanded in an orthonormal set of functions. Right? So let's actually, if we have our wave function and an operator where our eigenfunctions are orthonormal to each other. And our wave function psi is written as an expansion of those orthonormal functions. Okay, there are two things to point out about this. One, the sum of all c sub n squared is equal to one. The sum of all c sub n magnitude squared is equal to one. And that comes from having to have a normalized wave function to make a valid probability distribution. <clears throat> Let's do a simple example. Let's write C, our wave function, C1 F1 plus C2 F2. Let's do a simple example. What would my probability distribution be? My probability distribution is always psi star psi. C1, F1, C, C2, F2. Right? And if the wave function is to be normalized, then the integral over all space of psi star psi has to be equal to 1. So let's take the integral over all space of psi star psi. Okay. And we're just going to FOIL this out. So we're going to get C1 star C1 F1 star F1 plus C1 star C2 F1 star F2 plus C2 star F2 star C1 F1 plus, I'm just going to rewrite this integral sign again, C2 star F2 star C1, oh, C2 F2. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Okay. How's that? Okay. So the integral over all space of f1 star times f1. If these are orthonormal, then that has to be equal to 1, right? By definition. Right? Let me actually do it this way. We'll do this term by term. So we have c1. Okay. C1, C1 star C1 times the integral of F1 star times F1 for an orthonormal set, that's equal to 1. Plus, move it over a little bit, C1 star C2 times the integral over F1 times F2. If these functions are orthogonal, and that has to be equal to zero, right? That integral is equal to zero times zero. Similarly, C2 star C1 zero. 
C2 star C2 times the integral of F2 star F2, and that's also normalized, so that's equal to 1. And if it's normalized, that whole thing has to be equal to 1. The reason we're doing this is our wave functions, when we did particle in the box, our wave functions were relatively simple. Okay? Everyone could write them down. I could ask you to memorize an arbitrary wave function for particle in the box. As our systems get more and more complex, it's harder to write down what those wave functions are from memory, and it's often nice to be able to deal with them in a more abstract and general sense. All right. And then finally, all right. If our wave function is written in terms of the, as an expansion of the eigenfunctions of an operator, the probability of measuring O, the operator's property, equal to a specific eigenvalue is equal to the magnitude of C sub n squared. So for example, if my operator, in this case O, happened to be the Hamiltonian, and I wrote my wave function as C1 psi 1 plus C2 psi 2, my probability of measuring the corresponding property, which would be the energy, equal to E1, would be C1 squared. The corresponding probability of me measuring E equal to E2 would be the magnitude of C2 squared. All right, that covers everything from chapter four and a little bit more. So let's do a quick example. All right, I would find someone together who has a sheet. Go ahead and get close to someone now who has one of these sheets before you try and answer these questions. Thank <laughs> you.